Hey folks, I'm in my 2010 Honda Odyssey right now and I've got a problem that I think is with the alternator. I'll tell you why I think that. So starting this thing up, you can see that I've got the battery light on up there. That wasn't on as of just a couple of days ago, then it came on and, and I asked my wife to stop driving it until I had a chance to, to look at it. The check engine light has been on for a long time. That's for a knock sensor. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that being the problem. So I'm gonna turn this off. I've got my, my code reader right here. Well, that's odd. But I think it's the alternator. It's making a, it's making a funny noise, especially when I put a load on it. So let's do some troubleshooting under the hood and see what happens. All right, first thing we're gonna check is the battery voltage. Make sure that we're getting 12 and a half or so volts there. And I am. Sure enough, so the battery voltage is right. Now I'm gonna start the car and see what that voltage is uh, while it's running. It should be probably 13 and a half or higher. All right, you can hear the engine running. I just have it at idle. I'm by myself here, so I don't have anybody to rev it up, but let's just see what we're getting here. All right, well, it's charging, so let's see here. Yeah, that, that's a good thing. Let me turn on the air conditioning and see what putting a load on this system does to it. And right now, I don't hear the, the whining that I heard earlier, but it comes and goes. All right, you may have heard the engine noise change there. Let's see what it does here. Still. Still doing what we wanted to do. Well, let's try that again here. Okay, that's kind of weird. See that? See the voltage all of a sudden going to nothing and then coming up, so... Then there it goes. There it goes. So, got the engine turned off. You saw the voltage dropping way low, way below 12 volts, way below 14 volts. So, we obviously have a problem. Gonna have to replace that alternator. So, most likely it'll be no sooner than tomorrow, but as far as you'll be able to tell, it'll just be seconds away. Let's get going. All right, first step in this whole routine is to take the negative cable uh, off the battery. To ne and I'm going to set that out of the way. It's now after the job. I've already completed it and I want to give you a little bit of the learnings that I've had while I did this. I spent a bunch of time trying to pull the alternator out without taking out much equipment, but ultimately I did. Let me show you here before you get into it. You'll be best served to take out your power steering fluid reservoir, which just lifts right out. Just lifts, pulls straight up out of there. But you'll want to disconnect these hoses and, and catch the fluid. Super easy. And the power uh, and the windshield washer fluid reservoir. Unfortunately, two of the, the fasteners that are holding the windshield washer reservoir are only accessible through the wheel well, so I had to take the wheel off. But ultimately, that was much easier than all the messing around I did. So uh, let's get back into the repair video. The next step is taking off this belt that wraps around the, this dry belt wraps around the power steering pump here and the alternator. And I need to get a 14 millimeter socket and, a, and I've got this uh, pry bar here on this tensioner pulley so I can release it. The only problem is this air conditioning line is in the way. It's attached with three clips, top and bottom. Here's one, and then there's another one down there. So you can just pop it out of these clips here, one down here at the bottom, lift, just lift up on it, and then you can move this out of the way. And then the third one is on the front wall here. I've got my 14 millimeter socket on the tensioner pulley down there and I've got a, a breaker bar on here. And I'm gonna to need to push this this way, but you see I'm gonna hit this power steering hose here. So 
I, I need to get out of the way. So what I can do though, I'm gonna try first just pulling the power steering canister off of this bracket and let's see if I can get enough leverage. I'm gonna push forward on it. And I just, uh, yeah, there we go. Just gotta take that belt off. Once it comes off, I can relax it back. I'm gonna pull the belt off of the alternator pulley. And there we go. All right, okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this, this uh, bracket here that's holding these wire harnesses. And that's a 10 millimeter uh, bolt there. And there's another 12 millimeter bolt underneath this bracket, if I could get in there. All right, get that second bolt off. There we go. Different style bolt there. So this. So that's off. This was where the that wiring harness was. This was the mounting bolt that just went through there, and that was the other bolt. So save that for later. Take off this connector that's on the far right side here. There's a rubber boot on it. I've taken the boot off. I got the connector off, and the way to do it, it this is the orientation that it was in there. You press down on this where my right thumb is. You press down on that, and that releases that tab, and then you can pull it straight out. So that's how I got that out. It was a little bit of a bugger. Next thing we have to do is take off this rubber boot, and you can see I've got an oil leak here. I'm also going to fix that while I'm at it, I hope. I'm going to fix this uh, valve cover gasket. But take that boot off, and there's a, the output cable is attached there. So we got to get this. The boot is off of this output cable lug here, and it's a 12 millimeter nut there. All right, at this point, I'm just gonna lift the cable up. The terminal up, we got the nut. And now, now that's disconnected. So we've got the, there's one more wire harness attached down at the bottom that's attached to the air com conditioner. You can see that I've disconnected that. So now we've got all of the, the wire harnesses disconnected. Now we need to remove the lower mounting bolt and it's a 14 millimeter bolt. I've got a 14 millimeter socket there and I've got a breaker bar to give me some more leverage. Get that thing. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the breaker bar broke it loose. And now I'm unscrewing this thing by hand. All right. And there's the, the lower mounting bolt. I'm, I'm going to try to wiggle this thing out, and I'm wiggling it toward the passenger side here. Let's see if I can get this to come out. Oh, there we go. Wiggle it and pull up on it some. Now let's see if there's enough room to pull this out. I kind of think there won't be. All right, it's right, it's been a bear trying to get this thing out. So what I'm going to do is take out this windshield washer reservoir. There's one bolt up here that I took out. The other one, to access the other one, you've got to come here to the front passenger side, take off the wheel. And then there are several connectors. There's one here, they're just plastic fastener types. There's one up there and and I gotta take this screw out here, and then I'm gonna show you what we're looking at after that. And one other thing to note is those plastic connectors, typically they're old and brittle, and you end up needing a screwdriver to crack them off and they crack, so I've got a whole set of replacement ones. I paid 10, 15 bucks for hundreds of these on Amazon. And you peel back this panel, and there's the screw for the reservoir. So I'm gonna take that out, all right, you can see I got that bolt out. And unfortunately, there's one more right there, another 10 millimeter. And then I can pull this down and get it out of the way. So.
All right, a lot of frustration. And I took the reservoir off. I disconnected the, the power steering reservoir. I disconnected the tube that goes to the power steering pump and then took the reservoir off. Here's the, here's the windshield washer reservoir. Had to move all that stuff out of the way to get this stupid thing out, but it's out. And, and here's the new one. So you can see the orientation all looks good. Now it's a matter of getting this beast back in there. That should be a lot easier now they got gotten all the things out of the way. I put this new one in and I couldn't get this flange here in between where the mounting bolts are supposed to go. This bushing was sticking out a tiny bit. So I measured my old one and this was about 60 thousandths, a sixteenth of an inch too big. So I hammered that bushing in a little bit. And then I had to file some off of the, the back side there with a metal file. Hopefully this now will fit. So let's get it back down there and we'll try it again. All right, that one finally did the trick. So now it's a matter of getting this lower mounting bolt in. Just gonna just to get centered and get it through, get everything lined up. Won't tighten it just yet, but I wanna get it in. There we go. Next thing is to put this mounting bracket into that top mounting flange here. And I've got the, the bolt that came, came out. Just gonna put that in there. Got the bracket on. I, I should have said I didn't tighten the lower mounting bolt all the way just so it's still adjustable a little bit. So now I'm gonna rotate this up to get the, the upper mounting bolt through this bracket. All right, so I got that most of the way in there. So I got it lined it up. Next thing is to get this wire harness and such back into positions. That goes, that's that way lower one, way in the back. So we're gonna get this here, and this, remember this attaches to the top of this bracket that I just installed. This lower connector, it's gonna go down to the air conditioning. Connector snapped in, we get the boot over it. There we go. That one's in, and now, got that terminal on, just gotta get this nut back on and tighten that. All right, got that tightened, just gotta get this. All right, got that terminal installed, and now I'm just gonna put this bracket this uh, bolt through the bracket. I'm putting the, the belt on, and probably the best way to do it is get it under those bottom two pulleys and then lift up on the, the belt so you can keep some, kind of keep tension on there so it doesn't keep slipping out. And here I am. So <clears throat> what I need to do now is move this tensioner pulley far enough forward that I can get this under the power steering pulley. So I just got to get my 14 millimeter socket and my uh, breaker bar there, push it forward and this will go on. Okay, I've, I've got my breaker bar on the tensioner pulley. I'm going to push that forward to keep, create some slack here. Get over that flange there. Come on, baby. There we go. Then make sure everything is centered the best you can on all the pulleys. And then pull it back. And they all look centered. They all look like they're in the grooves. Pull that back. And now we've got our belt on. And I'll I'll put a link to a picture of how the pulley how the belt goes on. I'll put that in the description. Putting stuff back together here. I'm gonna put the power steering or the, the washer reservoir back on. So the one bolt that goes up here, and then there are two down in the wheel well. So I'm gonna get that one in place. I won't snug it up just yet. And then I'll do the bottom ones. The next bolt for the windshield washer reservoir goes right there. Got it hand tight, and then I'll 
tighten it up fully once I get the last bolt in. Down here. Right there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this shroud back in place. And I mentioned that I've got this uh, case of a bunch of these plastic fasteners. I paid about 15 bucks for it. This is great to have around for times like this. So I'm gonna get this in place, put these back in, and put the wheel back on. Got the screw in, got all the, the, the fasteners back in, put the wheel on. 94 foot-pounds is the torque. Back in business. Got everything back together. Put the, the power steering reservoir back on. Uh, spilled a little bit of fluid, so I wiped that off. I, I added a little bit more power steering fluid for what came out. And there might be some air in it now, which will make a high-pitched whine. So when I start it up, I'm probably just going to leave this off. And as far as the bleeding goes, it will bleed itself. But there is a, a process where you're turning the wheels back and forth a few times, is essentially it is. Uh, I've got a video replacing the power steering pump, and about the last minute of it is bleeding, if you want to uh, see how to do that. But otherwise, I'm going to go wash up reconnect the battery and then start this thing up and see how the the new alternator is charging all right you may have heard that whine at the very beginning that was the air that got in the power steering fluid but it bled itself out automatically like like i mentioned it usually does if yours doesn't, really just by driving it will get it done, but there's a, a bleed method. Everything sounds fine, don't see any leaks or any problems. So I'm going to get my multimeter and test that battery, and then I'll give it a test drive and make sure that it works for 15, 20 minutes before being totally done, but let's see how it's charging. All right, here we go. Here we go, let's see how it's... All right, the numbers look good, but as you saw before, it would intermittently drop much lower. This one's staying pretty consistent. I'm happy that the the voltage on the, the battery terminals now show a constant voltage. Of course, I only did it for 20, 30 seconds, but there's no reason to think that the brand new alternator is not working as expected. So I'll give this a test drive for 15, 20 minutes, but I'm sure it's gonna be fine. If this video has been helpful, subscribe, like, all that good stuff, and thanks for watching.